Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. So I know I've been away from the channel for a few days. I had a very hectic end of 2021, final week, a lot of things to wrap up and handle. I've got all that stuff done, it's behind us. So things are once again rolling here in the shop. I've been doing a lot of behind the scenes prep work to get the tri-build starting engine series going again, lots of details to get back cut up with. And I was also down for a week around the holiday season due to shipping delays waiting for another set of honing stones that just showed up today. So we're ready to proceed right there. But main topic of the episode, you guys have no doubt noticed these pieces kicking around in the background the last several weeks. We have some more Caterpillar NOS goodness right there. So those are actually some RD6 parts and pieces I picked up last summer. And we're about ready to get them out of here and get them down to their permanent storage location. But I wanted to show you guys kind of what I found first. So with everything spread out, we can get a better idea of what we're looking at. So cut right to the chase, we'll go into the D6 tractor parts catalog, 2H series. So this is the same as the early RD6 as well with that big three cylinder diesel engine, D6600. We'll open it up to page 38 and we have oil cooler and filter group for field installation. That's right. This is an auxiliary oil cooler kit that was engineered to work in conjunction with the existing standalone radiator. Now these D6600s originally were not equipped with oil coolers, which is kind of funny because you look at this first model, your first generation D2 engine, D3400, came from a factory with an oil cooler already installed. So why they didn't put one on the RD6 at first, I don't know. Granted, it was it was a three cylinder, five and three quarter bore by eight inch stroke, uh, basically a cut down D8 engine. They took it from six cylinders down to three and it was still good enough to be a D6. And yeah, you, you set that piston like next to that starting engine block. It's just about as big as the whole starting engine block. So. You had three of these gigantic pistons just banging away all day under load in hilly country, under continuous drawbar load. They would run a little bit warm. They needed a little bit of help. So Kat's initial answer was this field installation oil cooler kit that anyone could bolt onto their tractor. Later, it did become a factory option or factory equipment toward the end of the 2H series tractor run. But what we have here is some NOS components and pieces of one of those original kits. Way cool. Now the parts I have here are not the complete kit. They're probably 50 to 60% of the complete kit. We'll do a quick breakdown of what's here, but I've categorized them into basically two groups. This is the NOS group right here, never before used pieces. These pieces down here are not NOS. They were on a running tractor at one time, but it's kind of the beginnings of one of these field installation kits that we're just starting to piece together. So yeah, we have the steel lines that fed that cooler core. Just place these out of the way for now. And inside this old slat crate is the NOS cooler core itself. You can see all the fins in there. Some neat lettering on here. It was originally shipped to Braden Tractor and Equipment Company, Walla Walla, Washington, USA. We've got some numbers scribed onto there. Could be stock numbers, maybe shipping numbers. I'm not sure, but looking back at the parts diagram, you can see a 7B354 cooler assembly. Arrow pointing to that core. On the side here, we have quantity 17B354 stenciled right onto there. So that proves what this piece is. It looks like it was an old Modine um, core that they had soldered together. That's probably who uh, supplied it to Caterpillar, but love these old wooden cores. So down here, we have a radiator side piece. So this would have been changed out from the original one because the plumbing that those lines feed have to go through the bottom of this piece right here. And then that cooler core bolts to this manifold right here. And then to make this cooler core fit in front of the radiator, we had this grill surround that relocated the existing grill out about, oh, inch and a half, two inches or so, just to give you room to sandwich that in right in front of that radiator core. Then you'd bolt that existing tractor grill on top of it. So. Let's go mock this thing up real quick onto my other, uh, my narrow RD6. I'll show you exactly how it's supposed to fit. Okay, this is what you are starting with right here. So you can see we have just the standalone radiator. You can see the water core back in there. The existing, the original grill just bolted flat to the front of the cast iron housing. That's all you've got. So. And in true me fashion, we, we couldn't have looked at this while it was still warm outside. No, it's, it's, it's cold out here. 
and now that I look at this air cleaner, I don't know what's holding that oil cup on. Well, anyway, we digress. So to begin the insulation process, first thing you would do is remove the existing grill from the radiator. The next thing you would do is unbolt and remove this whole side plate. We're not going to do that today, of course, but this, you know, updated side plate would go in place of it. And you can see they've condensed the Caterpillar font just enough where we have that later series D6 badge at the bottom of that side plate because this kit was made several years after this tractor was built. So it makes sense, it stands to reason that all the, uh, the replacement pieces would have the updated font and the updated badging. But that of course gives you the plumbing that goes through the bottom and gives you the manifold that the cooler core that is gonna bolt out here is gonna attach to. And next, now I've mocked in those steel cooler lines that would attach to that oil filter base and bring the oil up to the manifold that's in the base of that updated side plate. And for this last part, we're going to need to use our imaginations a little bit because I'm not taking that NOS core out of that wood crate. But the core has four ears on it that line with the bolt pattern of the original grill. So you would attach the core inside the surround. The core and the surround would bolt up to the front of the radiator. So that gives you your extra room to slide that oil cooler core in front of the water core. And finally, you finish it off by reinstalling the original grill so yeah you just have a slightly thicker radiator quite a pronounced bump out there but you've also uh, hidden a lot of extra hardware behind that so yeah we're just kind of hanging loose because I just I mocked it up quickly with a couple bolts but now pay special attention to that housing where that starting engine crank goes in you can see it's a little bit uh, overtaken by that shroud I'll take these pieces off, we'll get back in the warm shop and do one last look at that parts book. I'll explain the other pieces that I still need to find for this kit. Okay, back to the warm shop where it's a lot nicer to talk. So we'll just look at the diagram one more time to uh, decide what else we're gonna need to find for this. And getting back to that starting engine hand crank, you can see we have a shaft assembly sleeve and a pen that forms an extension for that starting engine hand crank, clears that, um, that grill shroud that the cooler core hides under. We're still looking for those pieces as well as this, um, we got a pin, a shaft, a cap screw, and a washer that forms this extension right here. It is an add-on to the shaft and drive that's in this, uh, this bottom radiator tank for inserting that wrench on the front and manually barring over the diesel engine. So that's another extension piece right there that we're gonna have to locate. In addition to that, it takes an entirely different oil filter setup, base, canister, cap, everything. And you know, doubtless there's gonna be like a bypass down in here in case your cooler would get restricted or the lines would get kinked that would allow that oil flow to actually bypass inside that filter base instead of backing up, trying to get through a cooler or some lines that, uh, that just are restricted. We went through all of that in the 1113 build. You can look back to the oil filter and base rebuild uh, sequence, the episodes in the series where I described the oil flow through this and the checks and the bypasses in case we have damage out there toward the cooler. Doubtless that it's a very similar setup to what's in the RD6 and the D6 right here. The other thing that we have, it's a cross section of a change that was made in the diesel engine oil pump. So they changed the spring that is exerting pressure upon the, uh, the regulator valve. We have two different part numbers choices for springs there. And I would have to assume they stiffen that spring to up the pressure a little bit because you're gonna need a little bit more push to get that oil through all this extra plumbing. So that spring right there, one of those two choices is another thing that a guy would have to find to completely round out this kit. So there's still a little bit of digging left to do. But when you're like me and can just geek out on this stuff, Part of the fun, part of the thrill is in the hunt for the parts and the pieces. I bought that knowing it was an incomplete kit. Didn't matter to me because it, it's just a cool factor. I like all that new old stock stuff. I like the old wooden crates. You know, it's I, the stenciling. I, I like every every aspect of it. So 
yeah, I'm always on the hunt for new parts and pieces. There's always things rolling around in my brain. I'm always, you know, networking with other people, like-minded individuals that geek out on this stuff just as badly as I do. And we can kind of help each other out and, you know, it helps to find parts and pieces that way too. So it's just part of being an enthusiast when it comes to the old design of this equipment, the old engineering. It shows some of the thought processes of the engineers, how we can retrofit a kit, add oil coolers on and keep most of the existing components make it a field installation type of job. It's kind of neat how you can just take a look at all this stuff and you can kind of see how it evolved and how it works. So yeah, I have no intention of taking that oil cooler out and actually putting it on a machine. To me, it's worth more just being preserved as it is. And it's just a novelty piece. Another reason too is we don't have the operating conditions around here that warrants having an oil cooler on one of those tractors. Cause this was big, uh, it was a big add-on like out west where they were doing a lot of grain in a lot of hilly regions. The fields, the plains were massive. They were pulling these huge harvesters up and down these hills or pulling, you know, entire gangs of discs behind them doing field tillage. And they would go for miles at a time before they would turn around and head back. So that long continuous load is what really got these things warm enough that they needed that extra help. Around here, it's not needed at all. So it's just going to stay as it is. Hopefully we can round the kit out. I'll let you all know if I find anything else. So as always, everybody, thanks for watching. I need to get going on those starting engines. Hope to see you all back again.